Oz Armorfest, the mighty leopard gave up the ghost. It's a fan favourite, so it's essential that we get her back up and running. In this little video, Steve is going to give us his full diagnosis and show off some of the little known features of the leopard. The transmission stopped working and couldn't even start the tank, so it had to suffer the indignity of being dragged off the course by the bat. We had to do some diagnosis and um, I've never worked on a leopard before, so it was really a bit of a voyage of uh, discovery. In the driver's compartment. First place we started is with the transmission controller. What was happening was that when you attempted to start the vehicle, immediately the circuit breaker would pop. So you couldn't start the tank, and if you did manage to get it started, it wouldn't shift into any gears and, and it was really immobilised. We started off first with the transmission selector assembly, which is this unit here. Yeah, so this is the actual gear change mechanism. This toggle switch here, first setting is for cross-country running, where you want maximum power. Next setting, V, is just for road marches, where the torque converter and the transmission locks up. You've obviously got a reverse setting. And then the final one is pivot steer, where the tank will turn around in its own width, 360 degrees. It's a four-speed transmission. Whatever gear you select, is the maximum gear that the transmission will go up into. So if you have it into third gear, the tank will start in first gear from a standstill, and then it will go first, second, and then it will stop at third, and it won't go into fourth. So every action requires a detent to be satisfied, and it's operating the switches as it goes through. Okay, the pin's engaged there, but if you turn the mode selector, it doesn't allow it to to go, the, to go fully home if it's not in the right position. That's quite analog. Yeah, it's all analog. And there was actually a problem with this. When I first had a look at it, there was a broken roll pin in here and you can see that I've replaced it with a screw so that the mode selector wasn't being locked out properly and I sort of first thought that that could have been the problem with it, but as it turned out, it wasn't, wasn't the case. These two connectors here, do things like warning lights and uh, interlock for the starting system but where the main sort of magic happens the actual connections which go to the transmission all come out of this 19 pin plug so with any sort of diagnosis once we realize that there was really nothing wrong with that or or the associated systems with it is to actually then trace where the wiring connection goes so it goes up along in behind the, the top of the hull at the back of the hull is the junction box. All of the electricals come into this big junction box and you've got some heavy duty 400 amp circuit breakers here so the you know the name of the game is is that if you have a problem with the tank the crew should be able to do as much as possible from inside the safety of the tank to uh, keep it going. But the piece that we were most interested in is this our friend the 19 pin connector. We just do a visual inspection of it, so we have a look to make sure that none of the pins have fallen out of the connector or they're broken or they're dirty and corroded. And we'll also do an electrical check where we check the, uh, what you call the continuity of the wire between here and back at the transmission system. So that's the way that you work out that there's no short circuits or what you call an open circuit. From inside the hull, you can turn this selector here that allows you to manually lock the transmission into a situation where it has third gear, which was handy for us, so it meant that we didn't have to tow the thing into the workshop, we could actually drive it. It's also got a setting too, where you can uh, disconnect the transmission from the engine, and that's used when the weather's extremely cold to help start the engine so that there's less load on the engine. We've sort of discussed converting this into a solar heated swimming pool while it's sitting here. The bulkhead connector that we saw inside the fighting compartment comes, comes out of here. Uh, and same sort of thing, we do visual inspection, make sure it's all right. We also check the electrical connection between the two bulkhead connectors. And so this is the last electrical connection that's actually uh, inside the tank. So as part of pulling the power pack out of the tank, this is one of the connectors that we have to disconnect to, uh, to get it out. Yes, <laughs> yeah, huge, huge fuel tanks. I can't remember what the size of the fuel tank is, but it's massive. Now this is like the big reveal, isn't it, huh?
So this is the famous power pack supercharged V10 diesel and ZF transmission. And this funny looking thing here is actually the cooling fan for the radiator system. The two huge radiators that cool the engine. One sits on this side that we've removed. One is still sitting on the, the other side. Apparently this cooling fan here takes about 120 horsepower to turn it at full speed. So <laughs> that's more than what my car has. <laughs> so you remember the bulkhead connector that was inside the engine compartment? This is it here. Remove the radiator and you can get access to the shift system. Take the last few remaining bolts out of here. I've already been in here quite a lot looking and checking things. With the panel facing upwards, the ZF logo is in the right orientation. But when you take it out and flip it over, the diagram that shows you what all the different components are inside there is the right way up. <laughs> so somebody must have thought of that. <laughs> We've got a couple of sensors which look at temperature and oil pressures for the transmission. And then the rest of these things which are called uh, solenoids and that electrical signals from the shifter that we showed up front get transmitted to the solenoids and this is what um, this is what actually uh, changes the flow of oil inside the transmission and that's how the gears shift. So the cable runs along the, the engine and goes in through into the, the transmission. So we, we had a little bit of a twist a little bit of a twist here because we, we jumped straight on to testing the solenoids and pretty well straight away I found a solenoid that had a short circuit and that's what was causing the fuse to blow. So I sort of uh, figured, okay, great, found the problem. There's a couple of other solenoids which are in there which are also suspect too. And it wasn't until we actually managed to locate parts from overseas that I started to have a bit of a think about, mm, I wonder what caused the solenoids to fail because the people that sold us the, the parts said that it's a very reliable part, it just normally doesn't fail. I, I just wanted to actually show you, because I haven't pulled them out, how heavy duty these things are. So being a solenoid, it's just a simple electric coil which pulls on a valve inside which directs oil flow through the transmission, right? Inside here is an electrical coil that had a short circuit and that's what was blowing the circuit breaker. On this section of the cable, all seemed to be okay. Once I actually got some manuals, I realized that there's another electrical connector for the transmission, which goes between the uh, fighting compartment and the transmission itself. And I was struggling to, to get the thing off, as you can see by the marks on the connector, to, to get it to unscrew. And then I really had to wrestle with it to pull it out of the socket. I knew that it wasn't good news waiting for us. And as you can see that the connector itself has had water in it, which has caused at some point a short circuit, which has blown the solenoid. So I'm actually quite happy that we found that because if we'd gone to all the trouble of putting everything all back together again, we could have blown up our new solenoids, which had been purchased at great cost and took a <laughs> large amount of time to get, which wouldn't have been ideal. And not only is this part of the connector damaged as well too, but it's made a real mess of the bulkhead connector in here. It's actually broken some of the pins off. So this connector's toast and that's toast as well too. So we're sort of on plan B because plan A was just replacing the solenoids and everyone would be happy. Plan B is uh, to actually source a replacement the entire loom and also the wiring which goes inside the transmission. Plan C is for me to learn how to rewire mill spec connectors and to actually order the replacement parts uh, and try and do the repair myself, which is <laughs> probably the least optimum outcome because uh, firstly, I have to teach myself how to do it. And secondly, there's a significant risk that um, I mess up the pin configuration so that we have to pull the engine pack out a few times to get it right. So my, my next job is to start stripping the, the wiring out. And this isn't gonna be an easy job. The connections all have to be disconnected and then it has to be threaded out through 
this bulkhead connector and then out through here. So you can see these four bolts here undo, this piece comes out. So I've got to pull all the wires out of that. And of course it's a reverse when it comes to reassembling it all. With a bit of luck in a week or so, we should, um, we should get some secondhand cables that we can, we can use. Uh, to, to start the process of putting it back together again. I'm really conscious of dropping something because if it falls into the bottom of the transmission we're in all sorts of trouble because it'll mean pulling the whole thing apart. I've done my numbering system to number the cables. Each of the cables I've just zippy tied a washer to it so one washer means it's leftmost, two, two washers means that it's the next one in the line. I had ordered some proper tags to go on the cables, but they didn't, didn't arrive in time. I've undone all the clamps, wiring cables loose. Now I've got to try and pull the whole lot out through this bulkhead connector, because you can see when I'm wobbling it, that the cable here is jiggling, so it sort of wants to come out, but I've got to thread it through and the passages are fairly tight. So hopefully we can get it out. I'm really hoping there isn't another clamp stuck in there somewhere that I can't get to. I've already taken one clamp out and I thought that was the last of it. This is part of the manual ship system that I was showing you before. So it's part of the emergency override so that you can, when you pull on that lever, it locks the transmission into a solenoid into a particular gear. Oh, that, that red lever. Yeah. I'm not even going to think about what it's going to be like trying to get it back in, but that's, that's a problem for the future, Steve. Look at that. It's like octopus, isn't it? Crazy octopus. Yeah, so we can really see the uh, damage to the connector. There's a couple of broken pins in there and yeah, it's pretty much toast. Yeah, with a bit of luck, next, next couple of weeks we'll have the, the, the parts to be able to see if we can start uh, putting this back together, which will be good fun.